Hello dear students, this is Pirza Imran. I welcome you back to my channel, The World of Literature. Here I am bringing you the most important topics related to the um, competitive exams like UGC NET and other state exams. I am providing you the, with the material and with the topics which are very essential and which are very important for, uh, the, uh, for these competitive exams and which will help you in clearing out these exams. Today I have brought an, another tragedy for you, which is Cyril Turns, The Atheist Tragedy. And uh, I will be uh, today giving you the brief summary of this, of this tragedy or of this play of Jacobian era. So if you want to check out my other videos, please go to this playlist section and watch my other videos which have been on the Jacobian age and uh, other things I have touched in there. So let's start our today's topic that is the Atheist Tragedy or which is subtitled as The Honest Man's Revenge by Cyril Turner which was published in 1611. So I'll be giving you first the slide by summary. I'll be reading it out for you in order to make it kind of convenient for you. Then at the end of the play, I will be analyzing this uh, tragedy for you. So let's start our session, students. First, we are introduced to a wealthy French nobleman, D'Amville, in the monologue of the play. He's an atheist who carries absurd and unrealistic notions about the world. He also rejects the ideas of religion and replaces the important ideas of divine providence with the trifly worldly things. This vivid description of him has been given in the monologue of the play by D'Amville himself. He defines and explains his feelings of taking pleasure in others' pain and wants to hold all the happiness of the world which is the share of all the other humanity. This perspective of him towards general life and people shows his atheism and selfishness. After the play's monologue, the play reveals in death more ill intentions of D'Amville, conspiring the murder of his own brother, Baron Montefaris, and his nature suggests now for the prologue of the play, he also wants to destroy the life of his nephew, Carlemont, and intends to possess all of his inheritance. Carlemont is on a military mission and he is the character who has been given the tag of an honest man in the subtitle of the play. When the Carlemont is on a mission, D'Amville schemes behind his back and declares Carlemont dead by throwing canards and false rumors and also takes Carlemont's fiancée Castabella and marries her to his son Rousard. So when Carlemont sees all of this has happened behind his back, his blood boils with anger and he just jumps to the redemption. He confronts his uncle and fights with Sebastian, D'Amville's younger son. During the duel, Carlemont wins and finally spares the life of his cousin Sebastian. In this continual set of events, Carlemont is imprisoned and when Sebastian was spared by Carlemont, his heart melted on hearing Carlemont being in a prison and therefore he arranged a bail for him and he was a very good person from heart. Angry and filled with ferocious rage, T. Amwell tries to rape Castabel and plans a sacred murder of his nephew. Unaware of his uncle's intentions, Carlemont puzzled and confused uh, and kills his intended assassin, who is not his uncle. On the other side, Amwell managed to get Carlemont and Castabel arrested on a planned and false charge of adultery. All the actions and intentions go through a reverse break. Everything what D.M. will intend turns the course of the action on the contrary. Sebastian, D.M. will's son, is seen fighting for his love and loses his life in this brave action. This draws a contrary line between the father and the son, who both have different opposite causes. There are two other deaths side by side when the action of the play moves. Baron Bell Forrest and sickly Rousseau also dies, therefore mixing D'Amville's intention with a negative hope and therefore leaving a false effect on the psyche of the antagonist. But in the climatic scene of the play, when Castabella and Carlemont are seen on the stage or scuffled, about to face their death sentence, D'Amville shoots in a mental rage and tries to attack both with a big axe, but accidentally ends up hitting himself, arrested with a kill shot. He is left helpless on the stage and then only he confesses his murder of Montefiore and other crimes. The original ending of the play is that Castabella and Carlemont are freed after the confession of D'Amville and they are seen marrying later. Although there is a second ending or we can say subplot of the play which includes another character of Castabella's stepmother, Levi Dulcia, the both have unwanted and unloving husbands, they are suffering in their own miseries. But the mother and the daughter are totally contrary to each other when it comes to sensual pleasures. The mother is more involved in the sensual and wrong woman, who is a wrong woman, sensual pleasures, uh, sensu who is a wrong woman and is involved in the sensual pleasures uh, and is struck by the lust. She is an adulterous relationship with Sebastian and tries to woo the other men too. 
While as Castapella is very loyal to her husband and is a virtuous lady, Levidulci has ill duty intentions and wrongdoings begat two murders, both of Sebastian and Belle Forrest, who is her husband, and after these intended murders, she commits suicide herself. So let me give you now, uh, let me analyze uh, these slides one by one for you. So this atheist tragedy, which involves two characters, the atheist, which is uh, prominently, uh, you know, displayed by the title of the tragedy that is the atheist tragedy in which this atheist dm will dies at last uh, and there is the honest man's revenge the honest man has been inclined and he's given the direction to the carlemont who is a very honest man and on a mission uh, on a military mission and while his uncle schemes behind his back and his intentions are very clear so in the first slide we are introduced with the character d amwell who is a very ill intended character and and has you know uh, and has a lot of animosity towards his cousin and towards his brother montefaris baron balfour Bell Forest. So, uh, what actually happens in the course of the uh, course of the action? This D. Amwell is a very bad man and a very selfish man, and he's involved in atheistic acts. He doesn't believe in God and is a very dishonest man who takes pain and pleasures over the others' pains and wants to hold all the possible happiness in the world by giving pain to others. But in the next slide, we are introduced with other ill intentions of uh, D. Amwell, in which he conspire conspires the murder of his uh, nephew Carlemont, who is a very honest man on a mission uh, on a military mission behind his back he does two things one he is first he first arranges a secret marriage of uh, his son rousard and uh, and the castabella who is the fiance of this carlemont and he also throws a, and the second thing is he also throws a false canard or a false rumor about the death of his nephew carlemont so in the third slide, uh, we are introduced with uh, D. Amwell's younger son, Sebastian, and who is a total contrary figure to his father. Sebastian is a very honest man and is, has a good heart. So when he fights with Carlemont and Carlemont uh, defeats him, but instead of killing him, Carlemont spares his life. And uh, due to that act of Carlemont, his heart melts. And uh, Sebastian does one thing, the, f the money that is given by his father to him, he uses that money to bail the, um, to bail for the Carlemont. So we shows that this Carl, uh, that this, uh, that this younger son of D. Amwell, uh, which who is Sebastian, is a very, very you know, uh, very uh, innocent character and is a very good, na good natured character and you know is totally contrary figure to his father, who is a very ill intended man. So. Um, in the next slide of uh, in the next slide of the play, we are introduced uh, with some other characters. So uh, f this uh, this man uh, Carlemont is you know unaware about uh, the intentions of his uh, uncle, his uh, ill-intended uncle. So what happens on the stage uh, when? Uh, <laughs> So what happens on the stage when uh, Castabella, Castabella and uh, this Carlemont are about to face their uh, death sentences, uh, this man uh, fills with ferocious rage, you know, this man or D. Amwell, he tries to kill them with an axe, but, you know, uh, falls prey to his own, uh, own trap and, you know, accidentally ends up killing himself. So when he accidentally ends up, you know, killing himself, it makes, uh, then when he's on the verge of dying, and if, then the, he goes through the catharsis and finally, you know, confesses the murder of his brother Montefiore and all his other intended crimes. So that leaves a scope for uh, Carlemont and Castabella to be left and freed. And uh, therefore, they, um, at the end of the play, they enjoy and leave this uh, uh, leave this uh, play happily as a married couple uh, but if we will say there is a very other uh, other important aspect and other uh, important uh, we know v v point of view related to this drama or this tragedy there is an important character of Levi Dulcia who is uh, known as by the stepmother of uh, this character of Castabel, they they can be you know seen as a foil to this play. This is an another ending of this play. They can be seen the foil of this play of this the character of Sebastian and his father D. Amwell. So the foil to that character are uh, stepmother of Castabella, who is Levi Dulcia and Castabella herself. Levi Dulcia is a very wrong woman. She is she is a lust striking woman, and he's uh, she's after other men. And due to her involvement in lust and due to her uh, disloyalties, she you know engages uh, the two. Different uh, simple men in the quarrel that is Montefiore, who is her husband, and uh, this man Sebastian. 
and they uh, you know in a duel they kill each other because of this lustful act done by this lady Levidulcia. Levidulcia is very you know uh, is a very bad woman and is a very contrary figure and is a foil to this uh, these two other characters of Diamville and Sebastian. This Levidulcia uh, and, and on the contrary the Castabella who is her stepdaughter is a very honest woman and, uh, and an honest lover and is a very virtuous woman though she is cheated by her husband repeatedly but she doesn't uh, she keeps uh, her virtue maintained and doesn't do uh, disloyalty with her husband. So, Levi Dulcia's ill, ill uh, lusty intentions, wrong, wrongdoings, we get two murders that is, the murder of Sebastian and Montefaris. So, uh, if we will see the ending of the play, everyone gets uh, their you know part. Diamil, who is a wrong woman, is killed and faced with his death at the end of the play and ends up, you know, uh, you know, being caught in the trap which he has laid for the uh, protagonist of the play. So, um, and this character, there are other characters of Rousert and this uh, Baron, um, Baron, this Belfort. So, uh, actually, this uh, the character of D. Amwell is a very selfish character, and he faces his, uh, you know, what he faces at the end of the play what he deserves, and this brings end to this tragedy uh, where this atheist dies, and uh, this um, honest man who is Carlamon finds his love, which is Castabella, and they uh, they live together happily after the end of the play. So, students, I hope uh, you will uh, like this video. I hope you will share my content uh, to the greater and larger masses and uh, you will leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe my channel so uh, the efforts which I put in for you um, will encourage me to you know kind of drag it more and more. So thank you for watching my channel. I will be always bringing these special videos for you. Uh, in my next video I will be coming with a special video. Uh, thanks for watching till then. Stay blessed and goodbye.